so today, uh, hello again. This is Josh J. Rodman uh, doing more Bard's Tale uh, playthrough uh, recording. Uh, today I wanted to start. I I bought a whole bunch of silly software, um, and uh, I'm going to be using some of it. Uh, I figured out that the uh, very bare bones QuickTime recorder was not capturing game audio at all. I didn't realize that. Um, and so in this game, in this in this playthrough, uh, we should have game audio. Uh, so but before I continue playing through the game, uh, I wanted to change my focus a little bit. Um, I realized there's going to be an enormous amount of grinding, and by only showing what's on this screen, I'm sort of missing a large percentage of what the gameplay actually entails. So let's cut away from this uh, attract screen and um, let me show you what I want to do next. What I want to do is uh, run, is build, start building maps because mapping is a large percentage of the game. It's a large percentage of what you're trying to do. So over here I have uh, a scan of what was in the back of the box that the game came in, or maybe it was in the middle, whatever. There was a sort of portfolio that opened up and they had things printed on different surfaces. Uh, so this is a map of the so-called wilderness, and this is the uh, very small play space that you're given to start the game in. The refugee camp is labeled here. This is where we start. Here's Scrapboard Tavern, where we can refill our bard with booze. Uh, the ruins of Scarabray we've been in already. And we have a bunch of locations labeled Cold P, Crystal Spring, Vale of the Lost Warriors, a shrine. Excuse me. Uh, Twilight Copes, the Old Dwarf Mine, Sulphur Springs, and Shadow Rock. There's not a lot of information given about what is special about these things, why they're here, but it does give us a rough guide. So, for example, if you didn't want to make a map, you probably could stumble your way from place to place. Uh, but it's pretty small and easy to map, so I'm going to start doing so while I play through the game, because I'm going to be grinding for experience anyway, and this kind of shows how it really is played. Okay, so... Um, Cutting back to the game, um, uh, oh, I have to switch floppy disks and continue loading. And I'm going to choose to restore my save game, which should put me back about where we were last time. Uh, and what I'm going to do is leave... Wh where even am I? North? That's north. This is the way out? Okay. And I'm going to go back to the refugee camp and I'm going to start mapping from there. So I don't actually, I'm actually recording the whole screen and I'm going to put together the mapping software and the game in some fashion later. And I don't know how it's exactly going to look, but so I'm talking blind. But here we are with the North refugee camp. And um, so in the mapping software I have, which I've used before, uh, but not live, um, we're going to start out by placing a tile. Oh, um, do we have something like a tent? I guess it's not essential that it be the exact right thing. Uh, perhaps I'm going to start with a box. Um, and I'm going to place, oh, that is the wrong key. I'm going to place 
the avatar here, which represents where we're standing. Um, since I didn't use a very good indicator for the refugee camp, I can label it and uh, right nearby, two over, we already know oh, I just painted a bunch of them, we already know um, in fact, I'm going to try using labels. This is the... Oh, I made a note. I meant to use a label. Label this here camp. And um I'm gonna label the tavern. And in the game, if we say um where are we? It tells us we're one south of the camp. Uh so for right now I'm just gonna put a one here which is going to represent my idea that that means one south. I'll figure out how big the grid is soon enough. It's dusk, I want it to be day, so I'm going to enter the camp and leave it again. In the mapping, I am turning us around to represent which way we're facing. And I'm going to go west and north, south, and now I'm next to Scrapboard Tavern. It says I'm one south, two east, which is about what I expected. Um, I actually moved here and then back again. There was a tree in the way. Oh, I keep I'm thinking about this as drag and drop. I kind of want those labels to stand out. So, um, I think I can change their color. I guess I guess bright color on bright background is not helpful, but a different a different color from the general In fact, maybe I should just, oh, for now this is going to be ugly. I'll deal with the making it not ugly later. Wow, that's, there's really no good simple color choice. I guess the real problem is I'm putting it on another. Whatever. For now, these are going to just be next to them. Um, and as my uh, as I'm moving this dude around, he's leaving a trail, so I know what spaces I've seen. Because sometimes there are special things that happen only on one square, and this is the way you know you've been everywhere. And I'm going to continue east to find. Oh, let me add. Let me add the. This is our default color up here. Uh, I'm going to add the idea that this is too east. I'm not going to keep those number labels. Right now, I'm just sort of keeping score back in the game. I'm being attacked. I'm going to run away. Uh, well, I'm going to fail to run away. And 
one more east. So we went from 4 east to 15 west. So I know that this is the limit of the the world that we wrapped around. Um, so here we are at 0 east-west, and here we are at 4 to the east. And I'm going to build out my coordinates, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, five west, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And um, I'm going to set configure this the grid and say don't don't show me the numbers because um, they're going to be wrong. Okay, four, five, sorry, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I can also see that the world is twenty wide because um, zero through fifteen is actually sixteen in width, and then four more. So I'm going to the 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 large uh, uh um lines here are already set up for 20 by 20 which happens to be the right size that's actually just chance um but I'm going to now move my what are these I I I don't I don't know where those are like leftovers or something um Anyway, I'm going to move the contents of the map to fit the grid. These numbers are probably going to get moved down later, but uh, I know that my east-west now aligns um, with the edges, so I know that these two lines are the edge of the world where things wrap around. Oh, I have, to, I, have to, I have to press enter to leave the label control. I keep forgetting that. That's what I'm stumbling on. Um, I'm just going to change that label twice to get rid of it. It's one way to erase things. I guess there's an eraser, and I wasn't using that. So zooming back in again. The next question is, where do we wrap around the other way? We're one south currently. And... So if we head further south and check, we're at 4 south. Uh, 8 south. Ten south. Eleven. Oh, I just found Cold Peak. Uh, and we flipped around to 7 north. So turning back to the north, where's the boundary? There's the boundary. 12 south is the furthest south, and um, 7 north is the furthest north. So... Labels. Seven, five, four, three, two, one, zero. One, two, three, four, five. I just moved that without intending to. 
One, two, three, four. Oh, I clicked on it. I see. That is not what I expected. Okay, I'm starting to get a little irritated here. Okay, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, one, two, three, four, five makes ten, and then of course twelve. And uh, we know that Scrapwork Tavern is the origin. So um, we can move this content. Um, oh, right here, up to align with it. For some reason, it didn't move um, these markings. So, I'm going to try that again. Uh Huh. I don't actually know how to cut everything. But This will be good enough for now. we can go edit the footsteps. So these are the places I've been now. And actually I kept moving. And who knows where I've been. So now that I have my map pretty much centered in the space. I'm going to head back to where I was mapping and build it out a little more. So here we are next to Scrapboard Tavern, basically facing this way. Um, so I'm going to turn around. and head down. Over and there's a there's a tree right in front so I can place that. Turning to the west and back to Scrapboard Tavern, there are trees all along behind it. And to the left. Oh, I forgot to move my, um, I forgot to move the markers. So let's move those now. Okay. And I should play a bard song. Oh, what a lovely...
lovely sound. There's the tent tavern in the distance, the north. And I'm gonna go... one west and find a line of trees. Three of them. some quite a number of dark domes uh, I feel like I should use offensive spells actually I'm gonna just kill them with a fire horn This comes from the um, 50s tradition of fantasy where everything evil is dark and black because we hadn't discovered racism yet in the Middle Ages or something like that. Huh, the Firehorn didn't kill them all. I that find that surprising. So the way that spells work and spell-like effects are the people being targeted make some sort of saving throw against the strength of the attack. Uh, I thought that something like a weapon would have a fixed uh, strength value they have to save versus, but maybe it's the user's ability that matters. One more to the east, we have a rock. Rocks we can pass, you can pass through rocks, uh, but only by kicking, as if they were doors or something. I don't know, oh here's something that looks vaguely rock-like, stone. I will use stone for rock, because that seems to make sense. And passing into the rock, there's another rock behind it. Passing by Scrapwood Tavern, there's a little nook of trees to the... So this was actually incorrect. get there, but the more we record, the more clear it will be when we, you know, the more the more you write down, uh, the less likely you are to get kind of confused later. Um, I'm going to be, let's zoom in a bit so we can see what's going on. Oh, I, I never, uh, I'm just going to head south down this edge of the world. One, two, three. And we found Shadow Rock. So, this is a special location. 
location? Also one back there I can see. I'm gonna go check. I'm actually gonna try kicking the trees because I don't really know for sure that none of the trees are passable. Um, there's also a stone one north of where we are. I'm going to copy down to this location. Um, you know, in a sense, this is off the map, but being able to line things up is helpful. So, one more west, turn south, and there's another tree here. to west, and I turned and I can see there's actually several trees, I think three, yep, and we've been, we've been, I don't know if ambush is the right term, but a t puma is challenging us, the, the, uh, scary puma that, um, did quite a bit of damage to me last time I fought one of these, so... I'm going to try out my mage gauntlets on Lady Oak Shield. Thankfully, the buff spell got off before she attacked and did 14 damage, and it's dead. Maybe I slightly overestimated the danger. A useless broadsword? into her inventory immediately and go get rid of it. Here's the first, second, and third tree to the south with a stone opposite. Oh, a stone opposite. I think a tree here. But let's check. Yep, tree right there. With a stone or something. Oh, not 
immediately north, but after a gap of one. And something's loading. So I'm, something's attacking me. I want to connect up the map bits, because uh, sometimes you just have this... something goes wrong when you... Um, you make an error, and when you wrap all the way around, you tend to be able to spot those errors. So I've gone over here, and I'm facing this way. Uh, I found something. I made this bountiful Amid the bountiful trees, you find a bubbling spring. So, there's a spring here. I think it's called the Crystal Spring. green claw is, but I'm going to kill them. Well, I think I'm going to kill them. There's one dead. There's two dead. Hobgoblins. I think hobgoblins... And hobgoblins are one of those creatures in Bardstale 1 where you had to run away. At least at level 1. But I think that's not the case here. Yeah, 2 damage no, is no big deal. I'm attacking and defending mindlessly. Attack, 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 attack. Defend, defend, defend. That's what I just... I'm entering when I'm going really fast. Uh, they did five damage to me. That's not great. Oh, I found an un an unlabeled shield. We're not going to tell you. It's not going to tell us what kind of. Oh, I don't want to trade money. I want to cast a spell. I don't know what I pressed. Cast quick fix on number four. Almost full. Again, I'm at. Oh. I tried to press question mark, but I was too busy getting jumped. selection. Normally, uh, I would play this uh, 
uh, at a much higher resolution. I would run this program at a higher resolution, but I'm trying to minimize. I just said Control C, Control V. There we go. I'm trying to minimize. I'm trying to make the images bigger so they're easier to see in video. Basically, is what I'm trying to do. DOSBox with a special memory link connector, so as you move around the game, it automatically moves this marker around on the map. But we're definitely not doing that because we're playing on an emulated Commodore 64, not a DOS computer, and this game isn't supported anyway, and etc. weapon? Oh, you do. I should be having my um, rogue attack from the back line. Oh, wait. My rogue is in the front line. I keep forgetting. How about you? Uh, my monk has no ranged weapon because of reasons. Hopefully I'll be able to make that inversion pretty soon. I mean, I could make it already, but I kind of don't want to. With the monk at armor class 4, um, how much... Oh, they're, they're all at range anyway, so we're going to fight bravely. And we're going to use our try using our ranged weapons. Shoot it with an arrow. And you have no ranged weapons, so you'll preemptively attack and hope they come into distance. You have a spear that you will throw. You'll shoot an arrow, and you'll defend. Hit the, with the spear, I think? Oh, I guess it just say cast a weapon for all kinds of attacks, even shooting an arrow. That's somewhat unclear. Now that they're in... Ten feet is as close as anything you get in this game. Um, it says 10 feet, seems long for a sword, but it just means in front of you, basically. There are nine distance values that enemies can be away. They can be 10, 20, 30 feet, etc. The maximum is 90 feet. And various spells have specific distances they can reach. Uh, it doesn't tell me which way I'm facing in that screen. East. West. Oh, okay, so I'm up here. Uh, I'm turn north. And step forward and turn okay, to my two. You just step forward and then map what's in front of me. We have a tree a little bit away, another tree right here. West, I think we have two trees like this. Down 
gonna turn back to the north, and I'm gonna, we're gonna verify. Oop, turn back to the north. There we go. Yeah, two trees right in front of those positions. Back south and west. Back south and west. Two trees, yep. Towards the city, under the tree, turn back to the north. There's another tree here. One to the west, there's another tree. And now we can... Oop, if I turn the right way, head back down towards the city. The first notable tree is one of this set. Of course, this blob here is our scarab ray. was leveling up to level 3. I think that's not enough to level up to 4 yet. I am confident about, because uh, it's a mirror image, it seems pretty obvious. I'm going to turn back towards the city and check these two squares. the wind diver. It's the thing that casts spells that don't work from too far away and then doesn't do any damage. So I'm going to try just attacking with ranged weapons. Uh, why am I carrying this? Oh right, because I didn't know whether the war axe was better. I should pay attention to how much damage Chantrell is doing, although in truth I kind of don't care because um, Oh, I don't have a ranged weapon, because she's just never going to be a high damage person, so what kind of weapon she has doesn't matter that much to me. It's funny how you how the enemies repel attacks from ranged weapons. It makes me think that ranged weapons have saving throws, which might be true, I don't know. Or it could be just the messaging is lazy. Oh heck, I'm going to use a fire horn. So, arrow is repelled. Spells too far. I'm really bad at this. It might like depend on my dexterity, and I might have really bad dexterity. Let's just advance. He can get in the free pot shot. That does nothing. That's right. He casts spells that I don't know what they do. That's an that's like an arc fire. Yeah, three damage from Chantrell with this war axe, but I think she's weak because I didn't care about her strength at all and didn't optimize. Oh, and now I have another bow. Which I think strong in the arm can't use. Uh, why did I? I thought I pressed five, but I guess I didn't. 
Oh, can use, but I haven't got any ammo. Anyway, I'm gonna trade this bow to... Um... My bard. Is that right? Bard's sort of the last one that needs a ranged weapon. But... My rogue has one. My warrior... Has one. Paladin does not have one, so I'll give it to the Paladin. But what I really need is more arrows. So Lady Oak Shield now has a bow which she can equip somewhat uselessly. Ten west and four north. And this is five, so sure enough, I'm exactly where I think I am. Turning north. I can see there's a tree in the middle, so I'm gonna put it in. Uh, facing west again. Reference point only north and then west, and I'll find is a rock. I kind of don't like trying to map big empty spaces because it's easy to make mistakes. I go into this rock, and there's another rock behind it. That's what I kind of wanted to know. start copying, well, I would normally copy things down, so like, at position 13, down here, I'd put this rock, and I guess I can do it, but it's a little clunky um, with having to drag the screen around. You can see everything at once, when I zoomed out more, it's easier. So, at 5, we have three trees, and on the other side, there's a tree. Back to where we were. Facing east. One, two, three, four, five, six. And hit a tree. One, two, three, four, five, six. I know about that tree. Although. We now know about this tree too. divers again. I shouldn't have bothered attacking. They're just going to cast spells that do nothing. At least I'm not from that distance. Advance. And unclear what that did. My rogue managed to hide in a shadow. 
if the rogue successfully hides in the shadow, they can um, attack an enemy of that distance. So, for example, here we have attack foes 20 feet. So if I attack with the rogue, she can crit things up to 20 feet away as if she snuck behind them and then attacked them when they weren't looking. Although, I managed to kill this wind diver before we ever found out. Hmm, another, another wineskin. I don't think that the water containing uh, items have any value. Or not any of their own. Um, so, you know, you can use them and it tells you that you drink water and you're less thirsty, but I don't think that has any game effect. However, there are certain scenarios where you can put other things in the container. Oh, that's right, I have things I've never identified. So, I should do that now. Try to do that now. Strong the Arm has two robes, uh, both of which are worthless because my mages have robes, and they don't need new robes. somewhere. Weapon. Trade that to our rogue. Only rogues know how to figure out what kind of weapons things are. I thought I had a shield. Here's the shield. I'll trade that also to my rogue. The next step will be go to the rogue, go into the inventory, choose the item, and press, press I for identify and fail, which is about what I expected. For both. So for the weapon, I'm going to assume it's not something I really want because the best is a halberd and I have halberds. Um, because I don't think things here drop anything better, and I'm not interested in equipping it and watching my numbers move around. Because uh, you have to f attack a lot and make guesses. But the shield, um, I can pretty well determine it's not a buckler, because the rogue can't equip it. So even though you don't know what it is, you know whether you can equip it. I don't know, whatever. I suspect it's going to be a tower shield. So I handed it over to my warrior who is going to equip that. See, question mark is you don't know what it is, but you can equip it. And sure enough, armor class of my warrior dropped down to one from two. See, here it is at two with a buckler, and here it is at one with a shield, which is one better than a buckler. I happen to know that's a tower shield. I suppose there could be theoretically some other item in the game that has the same armor class benefit, but it didn't. I didn't get it here. And I'm going to trade the buckler to my monk. See if my monk can equip a buckler. My monk can equip a buckler. So now my monk is as good an armor class as my rogue, which means I'm changing the order. Okay, also, my bard needs to do some boozing. So she can keep playing music. Six damage is not nice. But by now I'm pretty sure I have enough experience points to level up. So 
7,000? Oh, I don't know. Maybe not. Facing west, facing north. I thought it was over here. But I guess not. Going south along those trees. There's nothing of note except that other tree I already know about. Turning to the west. And we go all the way across. One, two, three, four, five. And then back again to fill that in. I'm gonna get attacked in the meantime. Just gonna play the advance and take some damage. Strong the arm attacks for the first time in the game for 12 damage. It's a it's a good inaugural action. And canteens are they different from wineskins? I I don't think so. I think they're the same. One two. Oh, I forgot to go north. North. One. fill in next. Um, let's do the next row. So I went over here. Not by that path, but whatever. Turning west and stepping forward. One, two, three, four. And here is a special zone. One, two, three, four. Fail of lost warriors. I kind of feel there's a jarringness to the plane stretching peacefully and its lost warriors, which suggests that, I don't know, is this where a battle took place and they, are, they all died, or is this just, just the place where we commemorate them? I don't really know. Maybe I should have moved the monk up earlier. I think it's really a matter of my monk having good combat stats, like high dex, high dexterity. Another lamp. Lamps can be used to provide light, which you don't need if you don't go anywhere dark. Maybe 
you can't scroll and copy in this program. across from me. And now there's a... I guess it's not surprising that there's pairs of trees because there's very limited sets of things that can be here. Yep, those are the same trees I saw before. That's the Scrapwood Tavern. Right, friend? Is that right? One north. It looks like it's right in front of us, but I guess it's in front, a little to the left. So I went around this way, and I can see that rock I already placed. stuff is a little off the edge. I'm not going to map it on this side. Oh, and here's Cold Peak. The big mountain. It doesn't, it doesn't look mountainous on the screen there. Gotta use your imagination, I guess. <laughs> I wanted to make a new label and it maybe uh, it's hard. Labels are kind of expected to be big. Cold Peak. <laughs> Turning back south. One, two, three, four. Okay, how are we doing? The world is kind of starting to shape, take shape here. Uh, I'm going to take a break and head back to Scarabray. The easiest way seems to be go north one and go a bunch east, so that's what I'm going to do. The monks also seem to get like a slight speed advantage over everyone else. That could be, I could be making that up. It's just my impression. Oh, a plate armor. That's good. I guess it's only. It's the second of two that I'm going to actually be able to use. 
trade it over to the Paladin. And equip that. Oh wait, my Paladin already had a plate armor. Is this my third of two? Oh right, there was plate armor in the um, special building. So it's actually not, so I actually don't need any. So dropping it in the storage shed, the building in the entrance to Scarabray. Uh, we're not going to map Scarabray yet because I'm just going to finish mapping the outside world first. So, checking for advancement. Grisnak gets luck, which is kind of useful. Uh, strength for Lady Oakshield, which is quite nice. Uh, Chantrell gains constitution, which is perhaps ideal. Um, I think the Bard is going to actually be... The Bard of the Rogue, or probably the Rogue, is probably going to end up being my lowest hit point character. And my Monk got more strength. My Rogue got more strength, which is probably not actually very helpful. My Mage got more strength, which is definitely not helpful. And dexterity for the mage, which is definitely also not helpful. Okay, so about 2,000 more experience before they're going to level up more. Uh, you can see my um, monk now has armor class 3. So no longer is equal with the rogue on armor class, but now is superior. So definitely want to have her in the front rank now. And I just so uh basically the monk's armor class throughout the game keeps getting better without even finding um new equipment. Well a Gila monster. I have no idea if that is tough. My rogue is still pretty bad at hiding, but it doesn't matter too much. So to update where I am, I went back to Scarabray, leveled up, and now head down here. I'm going to head over there now. Through the rock. Double west. One north. And here we are facing the Scrapwood Tavern. Whoop, wrong way. I think I'm going to try to slice out this southern corner a bit of our map. Turn south and head south. One, two, three, four. And now I'm standing next to something notable. Uh, Fifteen west and four south. Yep, that's what I expected. I kind of want to find a nice icon for more things. Like, what should a shrine look like? I could put a little devil. Well, how about a little fountain? A 
an altar? That suggests holiness, I suppose. Actually, this plus works more for me because, um, well, the shrine is actually a church, and churches in this game are for healing you. We got head in there. We see the robed mystic. Um, we can heal ourselves. For example, Lady Oak Shield is missing 14 hit points, so the cost is 140 gold. I'm not going to use that service um, because I can heal my own characters. for no monies. Uh, but that's that shrine is very useful if people die um, or if they get withered or turned insane or anything else that you don't know how to deal with yet. Okay. Continuing on south. One Two. Now I'm between a rock. No, I'm not between. But to the east is a tree. And one more. And there's a rock to the um, west. And then they stagger. Including one directly ahead. And then another, and then another. should be 11 south, and I am. Okay, um, yeah, and I remember that they were shaped like this from before, when I was looking up from just, just to the south. So turning one east and turning back north, uh, the things I just drew or are there. One, two, three. There's a second rock to the east of the previous one. I turned the wrong way. Somehow I feel like I just missed some notable location. But no, there's no notification of anything. I thought in this pile of rocks there was something, but I might I may just be not next to it. So I'm eleven south and thirteen west. Yeah, I just walked back through them to see if I had missed something. There's the thing I thought that I might have missed. What is this? It is the old dwarf mine. One annoyance of standing on something notable is you can't see which way you're facing. Anyway, um, that's west, so this is north, and there's another there's another rock beside this one, beside this one, and to the east there's rocks and rocks. Some trees a bit off, but I don't know how far. One, two, three. Um, 
another tree on this side. And I think that the trees close in behind the shrine. It's my memory. Yeah. And they really kind of trap you in here. But if you're in a big hurry, it's sort of annoying. And you make those little mistakes all the time when you don't make a map. But when you have a map, especially if you made it, you tend to really understand your way around. Okay, um, I don't know how long this has been going. I'm going to finish mapping this little copse of trees. And, oh, I found a gloves. I wonder if it's a kind of gloves I don't have. And in here, yeah, nothing notable in that little tree nook. And I'm going to stop it. I'm going to go back to the refugee camp and pause here, saving my game. If anyone c continues watching, I'll see you next time. Not really expecting anyone to do so.